Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. So for this one, Matthew 5.17 or Romans 10.4. So let's go ahead and read both of those. Uh, starting Matthew 5.17 and 18. Someone asked a question, which is it? I'm, is this a contradiction? You know? So let's read it. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now the key word there is destroy. Okay, because that's the thing people are getting caught up on. Destroy. Uh, let's turn to Romans 10, 4. Keep your hand here, because we're going to come right back to it. But I wanted to read both of them. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So they see the word end of the law, and then they see the word over here we read in Matthew 5, 17, 18, destroy, and they think, well, which is it? All right? Destroy, what's one of the main uh, purposes of this ministry is to, it's to motivate brothers and sisters in Christ out there that words have meaning. There's times I'm reading something and I don't quite get it and I don't understand why and I'll go over it multiple times and one of the times I go over it, God points out a word to me. What about that word right there? And I'll be like, I didn't notice that word before. I'll look up definitions. I'll realize that word brings things into focus and we're going to go through that. So let's head back to Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Okay. And we're going to keep going a little further. And I'm going to be reading, try to keep this short, because we're going to be jumping around a little bit. But make sure to keep your hand in Matthew as we're jumping around. Okay. So turn back to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. See, it's talking about two things. He's not here to just, this is Jesus speaking. He's not going to destroy the law, nor is he going to destroy the prophets. Okay. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Okay? That's the key there. He's going to fulfill these things. He's going to fulfill the law, and he's going to fulfill the prophecies, the Old Testament prophecies. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Now, one thing I forgot to ask is, what? At what time is this being written? Is it written in the New Testament or the Old Testament? The Old Testament. Okay, he's preaching to the Jewish people. Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven is what? The thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Jot or tittle are two different words that have to do with the Hebrew letters. The beginning, it's almost like saying A through um, Z. Okay, will not pass for us, but it's using uh, the Hebrew letters, and what it's talking about ultimately is the sacrifice for sins. Anytime you break any of the commandments of God, the laws of God, you have sinned, and now you're worthy of death. Okay, a price that has to be paid for breaking God's law. Jesus said that uh, he didn't come to destroy the law. There's still a price that's got to be paid. He's still alive. He hasn't died on the cross and rose again the third day. There's still a price to be paid for sin. Okay. The, uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. You want to tur turn back to Matthew. Hold your place there. Turn back to Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying... Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. What's going up on up here, what we're reading in Matthew 5, about saying that, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. What's going on here? It's the kingdom of heaven is being preached. And we're going to get to what the kingdom of heaven is, but it's repent and believe well, let's go ahead and it. believe that Jesus Christ is their king, and Jesus was going to bring in the thousand-year reign. But the Jewish people rejected him. If you turn to Matthew chapter 4, 13, when, what happened after John got put in prison. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the border of Zebulun and Naphtali, or Nephthalim, I'll just say it like that, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Nephthali by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great light to them which sat in the regions, all those areas it's talking about, and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Okay. Who's that light? What's that light? Verse 17, From that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The context of Matthew 5, 17, it's talking about Jesus Christ came to be their king, right? to bring in that thousand-year reign. But there's a, also a foretelling, I believe, in here, talking about what Jesus was going to do when the Jewish people rejected him Okay. His death, burial, and resurrection of the cross. And that's where we get into the Romans, which I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. The kingdom of heaven. So what is the kingdom of heaven? Okay. Wonder, maybe I don't have, I'll have to look up the verse. But turn to Matthew chapter 11, verse 7. I hope it's in here. But if not, we'll look it up. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are at, in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. Remember what we read up there in Matthew. We're going to keep going. But what we read up there in Matthew about destroying the law or the prophets okay, until all be fulfilled. All the prophecies haven't been fulfilled because the Jewish people rejected Jesus Christ and it got put off. Okay. Verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the day of John the Baptist until now, here it is, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Can you take the spiritual kingdom by force? Can you take heaven by force? No. This is talking about Jerusalem. It's talking about the physical kingdom that Jesus is going to rule and reign from. It's prophecy. He was promised. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until today. No. Did it, was it until Romans 10.4 when it was written by Paul? Until Paul's time? No. Until what? Until John. Okay. That for the Jewish people, that was the marker that John the Baptist was the last prophecy before Jesus Christ comes in. The kingdom is supposed to come in, their king is supposed to be there, and well, he was right in front of them, fulfilling all the prophecies. 14. There was no more new prophecies, in other words. And if ye will receive it, that this is Elias, which was for to come, he that hath ears to hear. Let him hear. Okay. 
the law, we're going to get into the law of sin and death, but right here, when it's talking about destroying the law, it says, I've come not to destroy the law or the prophets, I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. When you fulfill something, it's done. It's completed. Jesus is saying, it hasn't been completed yet. He hasn't died on the cross and rose again. He hasn't ruled and reigned for a thousand years. For the Jewish people, it's not completed yet. It's not finished. Okay. Um, Romans 10, 1. If you want to go ahead and turn to Romans 10, chapter 1. We're going to get over there. So we see here that the law is not being destroyed, nor the prophecies. He's not saying that I, I'm going to do my own thing. No, the prophecies still need to be fulfilled. The law still is in effect. The law of sin and death, which we're going to get into. Okay. There's still a cost for sinning against God and disobeying His commandments. The law. So Romans 10, 1. This, we're going to go to Romans 10, where we read 4, but we're going to go back to 1, and we're going to read through it. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved after the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. The prophecy is being fulfilled. The Old Testament, by his uh, stripes we are healed. Okay? He was bruised for our iniquities. He was, uh, I don't have that one in here, but I, sometimes I can quote it, sometimes I can't. For he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I'm missing something. I know I am, but I don't want to spend too much time. But bottom line, these are prophecies. Okay? They had the, but not according to knowledge. They weren't paying attention to what was written. Kind of like today, people aren't paying attention to what is written. They don't like the Word of God. The true Word of God. Okay. Um, no, verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. We call it self-righteousness, but all honestly, what it is, they're seeking righteousness in themselves But they can't find it. You'll never find it. Now, it did not say, I want to write this because we're going to stop there for, and take a break and, and put in some points. It did not say they had righteousness, but that they were trying to establish it. They were trying to deceive themselves into believing that they could be righteous. If you want to read a good uh, parable, that I believe is a true story, you read about the publican and the, the Pharisee and the publican when they went to pray. And the Pharisee, he was a righteous man according in his own eyes. He was a righteous man. He went about to establish his own righteousness. And the um, publican knew he had no righteousness. He was a sinner. Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous. Okay, when you try to seek out your own righteousness, you'll fail every time, and you'll wind up in hell to burn for all eternity. Okay? There's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. They have all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. Remember it said that they weren't seeking God's righteousness. They were going about to establish their own. A lot of people today that do the same thing. Okay. A lot of false Christians, too, professing Christians that are still going about to establish their own righteousness. When one, tries, when one tries to look into themselves to find their own righteousness, they will never find it. Never. Okay. Uh, we're going to continue in Romans chapter 10, verse 3. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They're still trying to establish their own righteousness. Righteousness, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. 
There we go. We get that end of the law. Did it say end of the law, period? No. For righteousness. Right? When you seek God's righteousness and you get God's righteousness imputed to you, it's the end of the law of sin and death. When you're going to establish your own righteousness, that law still applies. It hasn't ended. That law of sin and death still applies to someone who rejects Jesus Christ, who refuses to repent and believe and give God their life. Uh, and most also right there real quick it says to everyone that believeth it's talking about saved sinners if you're saved Bible believing God fearing man or woman uh, it's the, God, uh, the end of the law of sin and death is come because you have whose righteousness God's righteousness at one point you became broken and you were seeking God's righteousness Romans 8 chapter 8 verse 1 there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. It's come to an end, those who get saved. For righteousness, okay? For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. We're no longer condemned because we are sinners. We are still sinners, but the law of sin and death is no longer upon us, so we're no longer condemned. Verse 4, that the, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled... So we got the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. When you get saved, Jesus' righteousness is imputed to you, and now that law has been fulfilled in us. Remember what it said over in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17? Uh, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I came not, I came, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Well, we just read right there that the law might be fulfilled in us. The Holy Spirit comes in. Right? You have Jesus in you. He fulfilled the law of sin and death. Walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Right? The end of the law of sin and death for those that believe. Save sinners who have submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. In other words, you come to God broken... I, you're no longer seeking your own self-righteousness. Or I keep saying self. You're no longer seeking to establish your own righteousness. You come to God saying, I have no righteousness. I am a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner on my way to hell. Are you guys? Hopefully this is helping you guys understand they don't contradict. Okay, One says it's gonna, he's not going to destroy it. It's going to be fulfilled. The other one talks about when it's fulfilled after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay. Romans uh, 4.14 Here we're going to talk about real quick the, uh, the God's righteousness being imputed to us through Jesus Christ. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Why? Because the the law worketh wrath. The moment you have disobeyed one law, no matter how small, you now have God's wrath upon you. And I'm not saying He's pouring it out right then and there, but it's upon you. Your future destination, you're on your way to hell. You're not guaranteed to go there. As long as you're breathing, you have a chance to get saved. But that's what this is talking about. If you're trying to live by the law, you know, going to establish your own self righteous or your own righteousness. I can't help but I get just trying to get that self part out. Your own righteousness, okay? What happens? The law worketh wrath. Remember, the law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. It's to let us know we're on, we're going to go to hell. We've broken the law, and we need a savior. We need true righteousness. We'll never have it of our own accord. For where no law is, there is no transgression. 
In other words, there is a law and there is transgression when you break it. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken. Why was he hoping? Let's keep reading. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. hundred years old. Okay. Verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, talking about God, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone, now we're getting into us, for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if... Here we have a Bible if. We believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Excuse me. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Righteousness get imputed to you. But notice it says there, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Him there, I believe, is a reference to the Godhead. It's a reference to Jesus Christ as the Godhead. And we say, why is that? Well, uh, we already read up there where it said God raised him from the dead. There's other verses um, where Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. All right? And that talks about how he was quickened by the Spirit. The Spirit raised him from the dead. All three parts are members, if you want to say, of the Godhead, not members, uh, yeah, members is a good one. Because everybody keeps trying to say, use these words, use these words. It's not persons, okay? It's the three members of the Godhead raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus, who is God fully and completely, raised himself from the dead. Only God can do that. Okay? But we see that the righteousness is imputed to us. What did we read up there in Romans? Okay? That the law uh, has come to an end for righteousness. God made a way for us to go to heaven. We need to be righteous. We can't do it of our own accord. Jesus came down so he could do it for us. He was righteous. He was sinless. He never broke any of the laws. Okay, here we are. almost lost my th uh, thought. So remember, the law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Why? Because the law lets us know that we have no righteousness. We're sinners. We're on our way to hell. We have a sickness. We need a cure. Mm -hmm. Romans 10.5. Go back, back to Romans 10.5. For Moses, and I forgot to say to keep your hands here, but in Moses, uh, in Romans, but Romans ten five, for Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Let me ask you something, brother and sister of Christ. I already know kind of the answer, but anybody who's lost, professing to be saved, out there, um, can you live by the law? Oh yeah, I can live by the law. Then you haven't broken any of them. Not one of them. Oh, well, you know, I, I, I obey all the law, kind of like those Pharisees, where you have to, your righteousness needs to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. Well, if you say you can live by the law, and that means you haven't broken any of them, 1 John 1.10, what does it say? If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Right? You're still going about to seek your own um, 
righteousness. When you try to say, I can live by the law. So what's that saying? Well, if you're going to live by the law, then your righteousness is going to come by the law. And you're going to, you're going to, your righteousness is going to be tested and held accountable to the law. Mm -hmm. Romans 10, 6. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from the dead. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Okay? Righteousness which is of faith. Okay? When are we talking about? When you have faith, God's righteousness can be imputed to you. For Abraham, he had faith that God could keep his promise. No matter, he was 100 years old, uh, Sarah was old, but he kept his faith in the Lord and it was imputed to him for righteousness. Same thing for us who get saved and we believe in Jesus Christ and have faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ at the cross. He died for, he died for my sins. I'm talking personally. He died in a way that's personal. He died for my sins paid a price that I should pay and will pay if I reject Jesus Christ, but I came to him broken as a sinner and said, hey, I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins. Lord, I'm so sorry for sinning against you. Please have mercy on me. I believe that you died, you were buried, and you rose again the third day, proving that you are God fully and completely. Lord, please save me. I don't deserve it. Please save me. That faith is now counted to me as righteousness. Jesus' righteousness is imputed upon me. Now, the end of the law, for what? For righteousness. My righteousness is no longer going to be compared to the law, is another way to say it. Why? Because I'd fail. Guaranteed, fail on my way to hell. But now, Jesus' righteousness is used, not mine. Okay. Right there we read also about bringing Christ down from above or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from dead. I heard a comment from a neighbor uh, in passing. Uh, he was giving some white lilies to another neighbor and she was like, I really don't like white lilies because it reminds me of funerals. And he was talking about, well, don't worry, you can do it for like Easter. I guess it's an Easter flower. I don't celebrate Easter. It's pagan. But Easter, and then he slipped up and said, or about Jesus' death, because he's still dead. He's lost. He's on his way to hell. I've heard that. Why? Because people want proof. All right. Hebrews 11.1 1, Is faith, does faith, I have faith, but I need proof? Is that real faith if you have to have proof? You need to bring Jesus down so I can believe in him? Or I have to actually physically see him? Remember with one of the apostles said, if unless I stick my finger into his side, I think it was, uh, oh, I can't remember. But somebody will mention it in the comment section. But uh, sometimes the names elude me. It's one of the, the 12 apostles. Right here, he's trying to say that you want proof. No, you're supposed to have faith. Okay. P uh, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's what true faith is. You're not supposed to be seeking evidence. Proof. Mm -hmm. So let's go back and finish that out at Romans 10.8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto Righteousness. Remember the end of the law for righteousness. We get Jesus' righteousness. Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. It's a heart issue. That's why I always push this. Uh, people kind of got on to me. Can someone say Jesus is the Lord? Absolutely. And be lost? Absolutely. Someone can read it. Someone can be reading the Bible out loud. They're saying it, right? Does that mean they believe it down here? No. It's got to be a heart thing. You believe it, and it's in your heart. What, you're, what you confess needs to come from your heart. And it's based off your actions and how you live your life. Right? 
uh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. I hear people say it, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. I said, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. They're just words. True confession right there is the Bible definition of true confession. True confession comes from the heart. You're not just saying it to say it. You're not saying it to appease certain people, a certain group of people to be part of a certain club. You know, it's something that comes from the heart. True confession. All right. So, for this study to, to wind it up, destroy versus end. Okay, they're two different words. The law of sin and death hasn't been destroyed. Okay, it's come to an end for those that believe. Those who get saved. Those who are lost, that law of sin and death still apply. It hasn't been destroyed. But for those of us who are saved, it has come to an end. Uh, remember when I did that study on when faith comes to an end. My faith is going to come to an end someday. Brothers and sisters of Christ, your faith is going to come to an end someday. It's not destroyed. It comes to an end. Why? Because there's going to come a day where you and I are going to be standing in front of Jesus Christ. Uh, there's the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to see Jesus in the clouds calling us by name to come home. When we see Jesus Christ, our faith comes to an end. But it doesn't mean our faith is destroyed. Right? Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came, or the prophets, he came to fulfill them. All right. And I just talked about some can come to the end and yet not be destroyed. If you refuse to repent and believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confess both, ask God to save you, then the law of sin and death still applies to you. All right. Those who try to take repentance out, those who try to take out prayer, Okay? The law of sin and death still applies to you. You can profess to be saved all you want. You're still lost and on your way to hell. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.18 I'm going to leave you guys with this verse. 1.18 For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved it is the power of God. God's righteousness. We're to seek God's righteousness. Okay? That's why the Bible is here for us. Remember it said word? We're reading that. Uh, Romans 10, 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. This needs to be in our words, and it needs to be in our heart. There's a lot of fakes out there that can read this and quote from this, but it's not down here. <laughs> Lower the, it's not down here. Okay. This is foolishness to people. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. God has given us a book so we could, He can help us and clean up our lives. And His righteousness has shined through us. Okay. Uh, we can know we have eternal security. We can, uh, we're able to believe because we have the Word of God. Okay. Uh, God uh, sanctified unto thy truth, thy word is truth. God's going to clean up your life after you get saved. Uh, people fight us on the changed life. If you have God's righteousness in you, imputed to you, don't you think you're going to have a changed life? You're going to be set apart from this wicked world that's still going about to seek their own righteousness, to establish their own righteousness? Uh, yeah. Uh, so... Those two words, when someone tries to hit you up saying it's a contradiction in the Bible, or, or they can be sincerely asking. Uh, I had someone make a comment asking about this. Okay, Destroy and end are not the same words. Okay, They don't have the same definition. Okay, Something can come to an end and not be destroyed. Okay? You know a train comes to the end of the line? That means it's, got, it's, it's not going to go any further. Does it mean the train was destroyed? Does it mean the track's been destroyed? No, it's at the end of the line. Now, destroyed, if the train is destroyed, then it's not at the end of the line. It can be destroyed as it gets to the end of the line. But you know, hopefully you understand what I'm saying. I'm kind of tripping over my words a little bit. Destroyed and end. They're two different words. But he said he didn't come to destroy uh, the law or the prophets. He came to fulfill them. We read about in Romans where it talks about the the law of righteousness is um, fulfilled in us. Okay. 
So, thank you, brothers and sisters in Christ, for watching. That's just a quick video. I don't know how long it went. Hey, under an hour. <laughs> so, I'm going to try to get some more videos out there. So, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Remember, trust the book. Believe in the book. It doesn't contradict. <laughs> all right.